Well, hello again, and welcome back to my playthrough of Starfield. I am Mental Fox. Thanks for joining me again. I'm having fun with this game. I've only played it a little bit, but uh, what I've played so far I like quite a bit. Um, I'm playing this game in Baldur's Gate 3 at the same time. Baldur's Gate 3 I'm playing on my other channel. I think there should be a link to that playthrough at the end of this uh, video if you want to check it out or maybe in the comments below. But anyway, uh, which game do I like better, this one or Baldur's Gate 3? Well, Baldur's Gate 3 I've put, you know, 25 hours or so into it, whereas this one I'm just like a little over five or six. So it's hard to compare. I'm enjoying both of them immensely. Uh, some things I like about Baldur's Gate better, some things I like about this game better. But after I played both of them more, I'll be able to uh, determine which one I like more. But so far, I am absolutely loving both of them. And I hope you're having fun watching me play it. We are in the Lodge, Constellation's headquarters. And we're doing some exploring, which you know I love to explore. Um, we're supposed to walk around and talk to the people here. We've already talked a little bit with Sarah, we talked a little bit with Noelle. Over there in that other room, it looks like we've got Walter Stroud and Mateo. We haven't talked to them yet. And then we have a quest, or an activity, uh, where we're supposed to check out the Constellation mission board. That's what that is over there. So we could pick up little side missions. Uh, and I think that fits with my character, my pirate hater, my pirate killer, because, you know, odd jobs is how he funds his... Con his, his quest to conquer all <laughs> pirates in the galaxy uh, plus just simply you know going from point A to point B you know probably picking stuff up basically serves as pirate bait so my guy's all on board with this 100% he is good to go with this arrangement so let's go over and walk into uh, that room over there and talk to Walter and Mateo as we enjoy this beautiful place. We got a pen. Uh, we can't read what that is. Greetings. Curious feeling, knowing that you've seen something that no one else has. That you know something no one else does. That is a rather curious feeling, Mr. Stroud. Well, I suppose calling you a rock breaker may have been a bit out of line. Okay, uh, I've been called worse. If, if that was an apology, you could do better or you don't even know me. So what's my character like? Um, I don't necessarily think that my character is a jerk, but, you know, he grew up in the streets after the death of his parents. He didn't really have any good role models. Uh, he had to fend for himself. So he's probably pretty gruff, maybe to the point of being perceived as a jerk. Uh, I don't know if he necessarily means to be jerky, but uh, the things, he doesn't really have any good, like I said, no good role models. He does come off as kind of jerky. So he didn't like it very much when this guy called him a name, especially this was probably the type of person that my character didn't like. We can always continue this some other time. You know, the rich guy, you know, there was always like this little bit of envy or jealousy and maybe anger that this guy got the life he got, whereas my character didn't. So he's going to fire back with, you don't even know me. Yes, you're right. My frustrations lie more with Barrett. Not the first time his shenanigans have jeopardized one of our ventures. Not fair of me to take it out on you, especially since it would seem he made the right call this time. So, let's start over, shall we? Walter Stroud, CEO of Stroud Eklund, member of Constellation, and oft times grumpy old man. Welcome aboard. Yeah, so my character is like, oh, sure, now that I've got something you want, you're nice to me, you know? So, uh, do we say, just watch the grumpiness in the future. I hope the drinks are at least free. Ah, eh, just, dude, just, just put the grumpiness in check, okay? Now, now, I've apologized. It's on you to accept and forgive. I'm sure we'll argue again. That's what relationships are. Breakage and repair. By the <laughs> way... In addition to a place to stay, the Lodge has a wealth of modification and research equipment. Spacesuit customization, pharmaceutical manufacturing, testing alien substances, the whole thing. You can even fashion industrial pieces for large-scale projects. 
If you don't mind extracting a few raw resources from a nearby planet, that is. I'm a fan of self-reliance, so I encourage you to make use of the tools we have to build what you need. Interesting. So I like to think, I mean, so his, when my character is like, hey, watch the grumpiness, he's like, hey, now, I apologized. It's, it's up to you to accept it. You know, this is what a relationship is. There's a little bit of breakage. There's a little bit of repair. I like to think that in this world I'm creating that Stroud saw something in my character was like, uh, uh, you know, this guy needs a little bit of guidance. You know, he, you know, obviously, well, I don't know. I would be surprised. I if, do have other things that yes. require my attention. <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised if Stroud did know my character's background, but I'm going to assume he didn't. But Stroud probably picked up on my character. He's seen people like me before, my character before, and so he decided to offer a little bit of, uh, I don't know, maybe fatherly wisdom. I think that worked out pretty well. Anyway, uh, let's ask him some questions. Uh, what kind of company is Stroud Eklund? We're most well known for ship manufacturing. No expense spared. If you want the best and can afford it, you choose Stroud Eklund. Unfortunately, our success means you'll sometimes see Stroud Eklund ship modules on less than reputable vessels. They covet them. The bastards. I've tried to convince the United Colonies we can help in that regard, but they're married to Deimos Star Yards, and those old salts are stuck in the glory days. Hmm. Okay. Well, um, where or what is your role in Constellation? Me? <laughs> Why, I'm the wallet. Someone has to fund all this, and all my success in business doesn't mean much if I can't put it to good use. I don't pretend to have the daring of Ms. Morgan or the smarts of young Mateo, but I can make sure that they have the resources they need. And, as you've now seen, those resources aren't being wasted. We're onto something big here. Uh huh. You know, this this isn't really a place I expected to find a CEO. Funny thing about companies, you build one sturdy enough, it doesn't need you there all the time to prop it up. Stroud Eklund functions quite well on a day-to-day -day basis, leaving me time to devote to more esoteric pursuits. For years, I was captivated by the writings of Constellation's founder, Sebastian Banks. I finally decided to do something more than admire from a distance, and so now I call the Lodge home as much as anywhere else. Mm, okay. Check out this guy's suit. This is pretty neat. Just noticing these little details hey. here. <laughs> I'm not getting any younger here. Good grief, dude. It's been two seconds. Uh, and plus, I'm, I'm admiring your suit. It's a cool suit. Uh, anyway, um, do you think the vision I had means anything? Up until very recently, uh, I'd likely have dismissed it as, I don't know, hallucinations. But now, I'm not sure what to think. I don't suppose you have a history of this sort of thing, do you? Let's see, I've never seen anything like that in my life, or, oh sure, I see lights and hear music all the time. It's a non-stop party in my head. Uh, I haven't hit my head recently, if that's what you're asking, or you mean, have I seen something like this before? Like this before, is this what you're asking me? Have I seen something like this before? This, or anything else. You'll have to forgive me. I don't know you as well as the others here. If you weren't so new to the group, I might already know the answer. Mm-hmm. Well, um, no, I've never seen anything like that before. Yes, I imagined as much. Barrett expressed something similar in his own unique way. I'm no scientist. I leave that to the likes of Barrett and young Noel there. But I think we can all agree there's something unusual going on here. Frankly, this is the most exciting thing that's happened in years. Okay, well... Uh, nice talking to you. Until next time. Yep, until next time. Until I need some money, Dad. Uh, let's talk to Mateo here. That is a roaring fire. Let's do a scan. Just just for the heck of it. Mateo, Katri, Walter Stroud. Lately, I find myself spending more and more time here. Uh-huh. Business has appealed to me, but this is exciting. Okay. 
this is all exciting, but there's really a lot of pressure on us, isn't there? We have to get this right. A little squirmy in his seat there. Are you doing okay? I'm not sure anyone really asked yet. Don't want you to think we're focused on the artifacts and nothing else. You matter too. You've done something really significant bringing that artifact here. I'm Mateo, theological scholar by trade, but now, well, an explorer like you. It's really good to have you with us. Mm hmm. Uh, let's see here. These artifacts all came out of caves, or what do you make of the vision I saw? Or what brought you to Constellation? Yeah, what brought you to Constellation, dude? Well, there was some overlap in interests. I'd spent years searching for religious relics from human history. I had made a really incredible discovery, only to lose it to a greedy corporation. So I tried to steal it back. In the process, I met Walter. Turned out he owned the corporation. After a long talk, we realized we had a lot in common. And I was invited to join Constellation. I see. Um, these artifacts, did they all come out of caves? Second one was on Kazal, buried the same as the one you found. But the first one, right under our noses for years, sitting in storage, masquerading as an oversized paperweight. Can you imagine potentially the greatest discovery in human history collecting dust? Mm hmm. Well, what do you make of the vision I saw, Mr. Theologian? I'm not gonna lie. I really wish I could have seen this for myself. It's hard to judge otherwise. Both you and Barrett saw something. I don't think that's a coincidence. Did it feel like it was trying to tell you something? I don't want to necessarily use the words divine revelation, but... You know, if the label fits. Mm, let's see, if it meant something, I don't understand it. I know it's important. I can feel it. Maybe I'm just going crazy. Uh, all I know is I've never experienced anything like it, or you think this was a religious experience. Now, <laughs> there's a lot of ways you could ask this question. You could be like hopeful, you know, you think this was a religious experience? Or you could kind of like scoff and be like, you think this was a religious experience? So I think my character would be more towards the latter way of saying this. So I'm not really sure how he's going to respond to this, but this is what I'm going to ask. Not necessarily, no, but it does kind of have the hallmarks of one, doesn't it? I'm certainly not going to rule it out just yet. Okay, well, uh, I don't know, dude. Maybe I'm just going crazy. You're not, okay? Barrett saw something too, and believe me, if he was willing to admit to it, it was a big deal. Just remember that you're not going through this alone. We're right here with you. We're going to get to the bottom of this. We just need more data, which means more artifacts. So strangely enough, uh, this character is really, Mateo here is really speaking to my character. I keep talking about how he grew up alone on the streets. He didn't really have any connections, or at least not long-term ones. And nobody ever told him anybody cared for him. That's for sure. You know, and then this guy is sitting here looking him right in the eyes and saying, Hey man, how are you? You know, we're happy you're here. How are you doing? We're, you know, we care about you. And even though my guy, you know, is from the streets and is gruff and everything, that that's striking a chord with him. So he's he's kind of he's kind of liking Mateo right off here. Take care of yourself. Yeah, thanks, Mateo. Nice talking to you. Okay, let's. Uh, I don't think that there's anybody the else. Best possible oh. person to be running Constellation at a time like this. Yeah. Focused, no nonsense, and dedicated. Cool, good to know. Um, who's this? That's an interesting piece of artwork there. I, d I love stuff like this. I mean, uh, she's got like a uh, treble clef here on her face. I guess, I don't know if this is sheet music flying around her here. But I mean, this is just a little piece of artwork hanging in this room in this digital game that, I don't know, most people probably wouldn't even give a second glance to, but that's a pretty neat piece of artwork that somebody created. I mean, I hope somebody created it. I don't know, now you get AI to do stuff. But that's pretty cool. I, I don't know, I just really love things like this. Well, I suppose that station in orbit has more than paid for itself at this point. I wonder if he's, like, talking to somebody who has a little tiny Bluetooth phone now. 
Got a really cool desk here. Oh, it's got some neat stuff on it. Oh, this is a neat desk. I don't know what it does, but that's pretty cool. Another piece of artwork here. I wonder if that's Sebastian Banks, the founder of Constellation. Could be, right? That would be my guess. And then we've got um, a ship here. I don't know if this is a an important ship or just any old ship. But that's pretty neat. Uh, I got some more. That's a photograph up there, maybe. Some more artwork here. This is... Um, uh, the first female in space. I think she was Russian. I actually have no idea I'm making that up, but I might be right. We could go outside. Oh, a little sunroom here. This is nice. We do a scan. Yeah, pretty neat. Got a sandwich here. What in the world is this? What do you think about that? Is that a plant or is that some like a little table artwork I'm not sure moth vine you could harvest it don't know what the heck that is <laughs> okay that's pretty neat I'd like to close doors behind me we got a neat telescope here we've got um uh, Amerigo Vespucci here. I have no idea. Again, I'm just making word, the words up. I mean, obviously, Amerigo Vespucci was a real person. Let's see here. This uh, will take us back out to New Atlantis. So if I want to get to the... Oh, well, I just unlocked this door with a key. But hey, they they gave me the key. So I hope... Oh, my. I hope it's okay that I'm going this way. Oh, wow. We found the secret lab. Oh. Yeah. We've, there's the board over there. Okay, so we've got uh, first aid here. We've got a pharmaceutical lab, which I think is also in a room upstairs. Here we've got uh, a cooking station. Yeah, so I think we looked at one of these earlier. I mean, we could make an alien sandwich right now if we wanted to. We have bread and we have a nutrient, apparently. Let's make an alien sandwich. One alien sandwich added. Okay. Doesn't look like I can make anything else. I don't have the recipes and I don't have the ingredients. But we made an alien sandwich. Because that's what you do when you're in a new kitchen. Here's the research lab. So, um, you know research lab here. Wow. Oh, okay. So we could track a project. Okay, we need some materials. So it looks like in order... Okay, in order to do performance enhancement one, we would need two argons, two tetrafluorides, and three metal metabolic agents. Now down here, it's telling us, it says material, avail material available, like we've already got antimicrobial and aluminum, so I don't know why it says zero of two, and when I go in here, yeah, materials available, we have one in inventory, huh. Once we get more materials, we'll have to come back here and figure things out. Okay, so we could research... Old Earth Cuisine. Discover how to prepare a Reuben and meatloaf at a cooking station. Is that a real sandwich? A Reuben and meatloaf? And that would take us from Old Earth Cuisine 1 to Old Earth Cuisine 2. Or maybe we need to make all three of these to go to our Old Earth Cuisine 2. Manufacturing blocked? Required skills, outpost engineering, rank one. Okay, outpost engineering. I don't know where that is. Outpost development. Hmm. 
Well, I don't see anything called Outpost Engineering, so I'm not even sure how to get to Outpost Engineering. I have to look into that, because the game doesn't look like it's going to explain to me how to, how to use it. Oh, some weaponry here. Here's a weapon workbench. Look at this. So this is our inventory. This is what we've currently got in our pockets. We have a suppressed Eon. We have a Rattler. We have a modified Maelstrom. Um, but if we wanted to, say, modify this Eon that we've been walking around with, we can hit enter here. And we could put optic on it, muzzle. So right now it looks like, I guess, installed equipment. We have glow sights installed on this thing already. And we could instead put a reflex sight on it. But in order to do that, we need aluminum, which we do have quite a bit of. We need chlorosilanes and we need adhesive. So yeah, all of that stuff that we saw in that research lab, we're going to need to start picking that stuff up. Um, I'm not sure how I'll handle that uh, play, let's play wise, because uh, I can't imagine it would be too exciting watching me pick up everything. Maybe I'll have to um, do some uh, separate uh, runs off camera, as they say in the biz, where all I do is collect materials. I'm always open to suggestions and to hearing your thoughts. So here's stuff that we could make. We've got this constellation pack with a basic boost pack installed, a balanced boost pack. Oh man, if we need a G zero G gimbal and some of this to make it, oh my gosh. So I could track this thing. Wow, this is looking like a bit much. We'll have to devote some time to it at some point to make sure that we understand this stuff. Because this is a part of the game. Oh, it's going to explain this one. I don't know why it didn't explain the other ones. The industrial workbench allows you to create basic manufactured components, which can be used for building structures for your outposts and crafting mods for your weapons and equipment. The raw resources used for manufactured components can be acquired from planets and moons by starting an outpost and setting up resource extractors. More advanced manufactured components can be created from fabricators out in outposts. Okay. Okay. So, apparently we could make an adaptive frame if we wanted to. We have the materials. Uh, we cannot make an austenitic manifold, because we don't have any reactive gauges. And, uh, well, we could make a reactive gauge with this aluminum of copper that we've got, and then we would be able to make an austenitic manifold, but I don't even know what it's for. Uh, yeah, adaptive frame, common manufactured equipment. This item can be used as a component in crafting. So, I'm not really sure why I would want to make this stuff here. It seems like this is stuff that we're going to be used for outposts. But I could be wrong about that. Yeah, this is... Ooh, there's a lot going on right here. We'll have to devote some time to this. Maybe I'll... Um, in, in lieu of a manual, I would watch some uh, how-tos online to learn how to use these things and understand their benefits. Because if you watch my playthroughs before, you know that I generally don't have the patience for this kind of thing. And I overlook it. Uh, but I don't want to do that in this game. I want to make use of the tools that the game is making available. And uh, do some cool crafting. See what kind of things are uh, available to us. So, you look forward to that. Here is the Constellation Mission Board. We're going to take a look at it. Okay, mission info. Locate Pelted Fields in Alpha Andraste. Explore. I love to explore. This one has caught my interest already. We are looking for an experienced explorer to locate a planet with pelted fields in the Alpha Andraste system. This may require surveying multiple planets within the system. Payment will be automatically credited to your account once a planet has been located. Okay. Oh, wow. Oh. oh. Uh, I, I don't know why I picked this middle one out of these, but um, then we've also got Locate Aeroform Life in Piazzi. 
We are looking for an experienced explorer to locate a planet with aeriform life in the Piazzi system. So these are uh, very similar. We're looking for an experienced explorer to locate a planet with diseased biosphere. We're looking for an experienced explorer to locate a planet with slushy subsurface seas. Okay. Uh, and then we're just looking for an experienced sur explorer to survey Volley, Psy, and Volley. I mean, can I take all of these? Just, you know. Accept mission, sure. Planet survey progress is shown on the planet's info card on the star map, and also in the scanner when on the planet's surface. For planets without life, scanning a planet from orbit may be enough to complete the survey but most planets require you to land and explore more thoroughly. So can I just take all of these? Yes. A mission to locate a planet trait is the most challenging survey mission. You will need to search an entire solar system for a planet that has the target trait. Locate planets in the target system that have traits. This is indicated at the bottom of a planet's info card on the star map. Unsurveyed planets will have unknown traits. Okay. I don't see any reason why I wouldn't just go and pick these up. I mean, who knows? You know, maybe I'll just find myself an Alpha House and and draw stay, and I'll be glad I have this. I'm just gonna hog all of the uh, missions. I'm not gonna let anybody else take missions. Yeah, we'll just hog them all. So, um, if we go and look at our uh, missions now, we'll see that uh, we've got quite a few. These are ju just, you know, simply what we've picked up. Oh, we have a, we have an activity to complete a research project. I think this was from what Walter Stroud said to us. So, in order to complete a research project... looking for a marker because I, I whoops it's not right I thought I selected yeah right here activities complete a research project this is it should be giving me a um, a marker on my map but it doesn't appear to be doing that so These are all, like, crafting things. No, this is a research lab. I wonder how come it's not pointing me in this direction. Complete a research project. Yeah, I mean... Wow. Amino acids... Select. So, it would be cool if it would tell me you know, what I have materials for. Like, I have 37 iron, 4 nickel, and some sealant. So, I, I really could do a barrel mod here, maybe. So, let's see here. Put three there. Oh. Sudden development. Okay. Don't know what that means. Project complete. Research project barrel mods one has been completed. New research projects unlocked. Barrel mods two. Okay. So, did we do it? Does that mean we completed a research project? Well, that's funny. It says mission updated survey volley, sci, and volley. That's not the mission that was updated. Completed. Well, this unfortunately doesn't tell us about completed activities, which kind of sucks, but you can see now that complete a research project is no longer here. So we did complete it. 
I guess I was a bug when they told me about Volley up there, because we didn't do anything about Volley. Here. Oh, looks like somebody's quarters are down here. Whose place is this? Plushy cuddle sore. I want to. Yeah. Whose room is this? Why are they in the basement? Muzzle and me. Movie poster, I guess. A film by Lincoln Singh. And then, um... Here we've got another movie poster. Forever Human. <laughs> two dates for Darla 4. You've had two dates, Darla, four times? Well, the TV up here, but it seems like it sure would be a little inconvenient to watch it from your bed. Why not just watch that one over there? Yeah, I always wish that um, there would be something in here which would tell me, you know, like somebody's diary or something that would tell me whose room this is. It almost looks like a child's room. Here we found the restroom. Man, this place is looking pretty... Almost looking like a dungeon down here. What's going on down here, Stroud? Here we've got storage it looks like wow how big is this place yeah we got some storage we've got some artwork on the wall there couch covered up we got a suit here it says unlock oh, okay so if we were to try to unlock this yeah it's too difficult we can't unlock that I mean, not that I was going to steal it. Great sound effects. The light buzzing overhead. Oh, the well? Oh, the well! Well? <laughs> well, well, well. Uh, we do have a mission. Investigate brownouts in the well. This was... This was a quest that we picked up on. Um, so when we first arrived in New Atlantis and we were talking to that Bosch guy, right as we started that conversation, a UC Marine that was standing there said something about brownouts and how nobody's been able to figure out what the problem is. So it, it gave us this little quest here. Um, <laughs> do I want to go down in here now to investigate the brown eyes in the well? Why is... Oh boy. Looks like I'm going in the well. We'll stick our nose down here. I'm going to guess that it's probably... Some kind of creatures. Chewing on wires or something. And why is there an entrance to the well from the lodge. Scanner's not picking up on anything. Let's uh let's F5 this right here. got here a notebook well, I'm looking at it I walked all the way over there I might as well pick it up got a door here music is certainly making me think something scary or bad is going to happen
quick scan. Probably can't jump across this. Oh, well. Can I? Oh, geez, am I stuck? Oh, we made it. Of course, we could have just gone through here. Same difference. We found an exit. Oh! I hear music playing. What? Chunks special sauce. Doesn't this look like blood? Or is this a cutting board? Utility knife? Okay, I guess people have just been... Preparing food down here, maybe? What was that little bit of music that we heard? You heard it too, right? <laughs> yeah, listen. Nice piece of music. Exit. What is going on? Oh, this door's locked. It requires a key. This is unlocked elsewhere. Is that a person? There's people in here, I think. Yeah, those are people, all right. Okay, I don't want to... Okay. Huh. Huh. Well, that's as far as we could go. Because this door is locked. And I have no way of knowing. Is there like some like rave going on down here that's causing the brownouts? They're using up all the power? Well, maybe at some point we'll find a key to that door. Cutting board, chunk special sauce, cutting board, utility knife, utility knife. Pale ale. I'll take that. It might come in handy. But yeah, our hope of just finding the key to that door lying around here has uh, faded. Interesting. Okay. Alright. Well, nothing scary happened, which is actually kind of refreshing, to be honest with you. Always expecting the worst, and to have the worst not happen is, frankly, refreshing. Nope, can't go through there. Okay, well, we'll save this one for another day, then. Very interesting. Back into the lodge we go. Hmm. Well, let's go back into the lodge and uh, continue exploration. I don't think that there's anybody else to talk to, but I tell you what, I want to know what's going on in this room. What is this place? Why is this down in the basement? Hmm. I mean, it really does look like a child's room, doesn't it? That'll take us back out to New Atlantis. Oh, looks like it's pointing us in that direction now to investigate the well, because that's the quest that we have selected. Wow, all of these are missions. So this one here, talk to Sarah, that's our next main mission. But... Oh, that's right. We walked in here before. Oh, that'll take us... Well, let's, let's see what's out here. Let's take a look. Maybe there's a, there's a balcony or something. Okay. It's nighttime now. Huh. That's weird. The mass district over there.
Alright. Look around the neighborhood here. We got some people walking around, which is nice to see. It makes the place feel more alive. Not sure what I'm looking at over there. Got some buildings. Another really nice piece of music. Quite lovely. Okay. Well, this is neat. Nice little touch here. Go back into the lodge. Okay, so... Here's somebody's room. Somebody who doesn't make their bed. So we've got some credits just sitting here. Oh, here's a report on Constellation. I don't want to take it. I just want to read it. Can I just read it? Or shoot it? <laughs> um, yeah, I don't want to... I want to read it, definitely, but I don't want to take it. Sebastian Banks' speech. Huh. Um... Well, it looks like I have to take it. The following is an excerpt of Constellation founder Sebastian Banks' stirring 2276 speech to United Colonies leadership about the importance of continued space exploration. That is why, my esteemed peers, I beseech you, do not forego the dreams of humanity only to plunge civilization into an endless nightmare. The settled systems stands once more on the brink of war. And for what? A dispute over space? The cosmos is infinite, and yet, like our Earth-bound ancestors, we have become selfishly obsessed over what we consider ours. At our core, are we a race of conquerors? Of warriors? No, my friends. If nothing else, humans are explorers. So let us continue exploring. Now is the time to venture beyond the imagined borders of the settled systems and fulfill the dreams of humanity. For if we continue down this path, funding only war and not exploration, I fear there will be no one left to remember why we fought in the first place. So now I've picked this thing up, and I don't want it. It's not mine. I just wanted to read it. But, um... Yeah, and these appear to be... Let's see, sort by... Unfortunately, I can't sort by last picked up. But I can't... Okay, at least it puts a little exclamation point there letting me know. So, I mean, I could drop this thing. Hey, not a bad drop. I almost put it right back where I got it. Not bad. I am uh, way too excited about that. <laughs> Very pleased that that worked out as well as it did. Funky sphere sculpture. So, whose room is this? I mean, I would think that Stroud's room would be nicer than this. I'm not going to steal that cred stick. I'm just not. Oh, gosh, there's a lot of them over here, though. <laughs> Maybe this is Stroud's room. Okay, let us uh, look at the report on Constellation. The following is an excerpt from a 2283 SSNN news report about Constellation's near collapse. And although Constellation's relevance has been a subject of much debate amongst the new Atlantis intelligentsia, the disappearance of founder Sebastian Banks was a blow most felt the organization couldn't survive. In fact, Constellation's disbanding seemed imminent until, no until member Chloe Bao changed her vote in the 11th hour, thus ensuring the group's continued operation at least for the time being, as well as her unexpected appointment to the position of chair. So this was in 2283, and I believe uh, the day that we found the artifact, well, I know that the exact date, it was May 7th, 2330, I wrote it down. Uh, so yeah, this was what, 50 years ago when this happened, if I'm doing my math correctly, and there's a very good chance that I'm not. I have um, math stage fright. <laughs> If I have to do any kind of math at all with people watching, you can forget about it. So again, I know this is probably dumb and maybe even tedious, but um, this doesn't belong to me. So I'm just going to fling it in the corner of the table. 
that's what I'm gonna do. Oh, okay. These rooms with two doors are strange to me. I mean, <laughs> devoting so much wall space to these giant doors. Not how I'd do it. Not how I'd do it. Uh, here's a nice room here. A fancy compass. There is absolutely no hints as to whose rooms these are. Except here is Aja Mamasa's diary. Just like I said downstairs in the what I thought was a kid's room, I was like, I wish it was like a diary or something. Well, I found one, so maybe this is a constellation member that we haven't met yet. And you know, me being the stinker I am, of course I'm going to read this diary. Here, let's shut the door so nobody walks by and sees me doing it. Aja Mamasa's Diary. Seems like just yesterday I was pulled into this exciting new organization, Constellation. We would push the boundaries of human knowledge and experience by exploring farther into space than anyone had before. For all, into the star field. God, I was so young. We all were, but I was the youngest of us all. Now here we are on the brink of disaster. The colony war may be over, but the settled systems seems to just be waiting for the next one. Exploration is now at best quaint, at worst irre irrelevant. Fortunately, and it was no small feat, I've managed to put together a list of potential new members. They are Irvin Mandani, young biologist and physician from the Freestar Collective. Irvin, this name was mentioned in one of Barrett's um, recordings. I don't remember what was said about him, but he was mentioned. Barrett, speaking of Barrett, promising young physicist from the UC, a colorful character to say the least. Alice Campbell, woman of action and pilot, claims to have flown every type of ship at least once. Russell Luther, astronomer and former Freestar Collective military, argumentative by effective. Okay. Uh, Vesola Chen, philosopher, historian, specializes in humanity's early days of space exploration. Jin Tao Min, dedicated to finding truth among the stars. Neon Hitman rumors are troubling. With any luck, this new blood will be just what Constellation needs to keep going. Maybe. Hopefully. From the personal diary of Aja Mamasa, former Constellation chair. Well, let's boy. Let's let's see if we could get this place this thing right back where we got it. Let's see here. <laughs> okay. There. Nobody will ever know that we did that. That was actually very satisfying placing that back on the on the shelf there. So is this Ajamamasa still a member? Ooh, here's a report on the Clark Lewis. I breached the hull at approximately 1348 Sol time. As expected, all internal systems were offline. Emergency power had ceased to function years earlier, so I was navigating the ship in zero G. Again, I expected that. Almost immediately, I started seeing the bodies. They were everywhere. The crew, the settlers, all of them, drifting throughout the ship. What surprised me were the obvious variations in the causes of death. Those not in suits were frozen and fairly well preserved, and I imagine some of them actually asphy asphyxiated. Others were emaciated as if they had starved prior to death and freezing. Others had substantial wounding. Gunshots, stab wounds. I even found an arm floating amongst the debris, but not the owner of said arm. It was when I got to the engine room that things finally started to make sense. Due to my approach, I hadn't noticed it from the outside, but half the compartment was actually gone, completely destroyed. The helium-3 tanks had ruptured. Somehow. Sabotage? Faulty equipment? Wasn't clear. But the reactor was gone, blown into space. No helium-3 meant no jumping. No reactor meant no engines, no thrusters. That meant the Clark Lewis was dead in space forever. 
A few personal logs I discovered only confirmed what I then assumed. Life on the Clark Lewis devolved over the course of the next few years. Some people starved to death, others resorted to violence and even murder. There was even some compelling, though unsubstantiated, evidence indicating cannibalism. For the settled systems at large, the disappearance of the Clark Lewis is a topic of urban legend, like Bigfoot or the Roanoke Colony. Part of the myth held that the ship had made it to some Eden-like planet where the settlers had established a kind of utopia. It is a hell of a thing knowing something an entire galaxy does not, holding on to a truth so terrible you're not even sure it's as it should see the light of day. Chloe Bow's extensive 2282 report on the destruction of the Clark Lewis colony ship, which was reported lost in the year 2257, was a subject of much contention within Constellation. At a time when space exploration was already on the decline, Sebastian Banks feared that the horrifying story of the Clark Lewis and its crew would prevent people from venturing out into the dangerous unknowns of space. Well, I finally got my wish of finding books or diaries or notes or something that kind of, you know, flesh out maybe the owner of the room. So I'm pleased with that. Oh, nice shots. Well, I'm going to hang out in this unknown person's room. Well, unknown. I mean, I'm assuming it's Aja's room, but it's possible that somebody else has her journal here. I don't know. But I'm going to hang out in this room and end this episode. When we come back next time, we'll just continue exploring the lodge a little bit uh, because that's what our character does. He likes to sneak around. He's always done it. This is not weird for him. And in fact, if somebody came in here and caught him, he would probably be a little confused as to why they were upset. But we're going to explore. And then we'll go down and talk to Sarah and see what she has in store for us. Thank you guys for joining me on this episode. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, why don't you let me know. You can leave me a like or a comment to do that. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.